Hi guys, welcome to Neat Video Tutorials. In this episode, we're diving into one of the most important steps in the entire noise reduction process, noise profiling. So let's jump in and take a closer look. Here we've got a night shot in Japan, and as you can see, it has some noise. To get the best possible noise reduction, we first need to find a frame that shows a strong noise and includes some large, uniform areas. As you can see, any of these frames will work. They all have plenty of noise and a nice featureless area here. Now let's open Neat Video and start building a noise profile. Click Auto Profile. This tells Neat Video to scan the current and nearby frames to find the best area for profiling. Something large, featureless, and noisy. In this case, Neat Video selected this spot in this frame. Now, we need to check if it's actually a good area for profiling. Here are the main things to look for. First, make sure the selected spot has no real details. No skin, no grass, nothing textured or important. This one checks out. Next, the larger the area, the better, if the frame allows. Bigger areas help Neat Video accurately measure noise across different frequency ranges. And third, go for the area with the highest noise level. For example, this area shows 2.6. But let's see what this gives us. 3.8. Potentially, this area can give us a better noise profile, but this also brings us to the next, fourth point. Act on not uniform warning. This area has a not uniform CR warning. It means that Neat Video has detected details or something that appears like details in the CR prominence channel. These may not be visible in the full RGB image, but may appear in the corresponding channel viewer. Sometimes this message can appear even in areas that, in fact, have no details, like here. It's usually due to heavy video compression. So when you get to the not uniform warning, Check the area in each channel. If there are actual details, choose a different spot and rebuild the profile. If it's just compression artifacts and not real features, then go ahead and denoise your video using that noise profile. And this is what I'm going to do now, as the area has a higher noise level and has no actual details in it. If in doubt, you can always test multiple areas using the Variance tool. It lets you quickly compare profiles and pick the best one. But in this case, I can't see any true details in any of the channels, so I'll keep working with this area. Now let's talk about the Profile Check Mode. This is a great tool that helps verify how accurate your noise profile is and, if necessary, lets you fine-tune it. How do you work with Profile Check? Ideally, you need a flat area near an edge of an object, something like this. Zoom into it to 200% or 300%. Make sure you are in the YCRCB plus viewer mode and click Profile Check. This mode highlights leftover noise and dims real details so you can clearly see what still needs adjusting. Don't worry if it looks blurry. That's just part of the tuning process, not the final result. If you still see noise or artifacts, that means the actual noise in the video is still underestimated by the noise profile. In that case, raise the noise level slider gradually. That looks better, but a bit more should do it. There we go. Now I'll check a few other parts of the frame. Everything looks clean, so this seems like the sweet spot. No need to go higher. If you only have noise in one or two channels, you can tune them separately. Also, check out the noise levels in the frequency components. Those can help too. Sometimes you'll have the opposite situation, where too much noise is removed and details become too blurry. In that case, you lower the noise level, slowly reduce it until the noise just starts to appear again, then back off one step. In some rare cases, you may find you just can't get it to work. That means the noise profile was not really good. The best move in this case is to rebuild the noise profile, making sure it ticks off all these boxes one to four. Now, let me show you how much difference an accurate noise profile can make. 
I'll create a new variant and build a profile using a different area. This one looks flat, but the noise level is only 2.6. Let's jump to the Adjust and Preview tab and compare denoising results for those two noise profiles. I've applied the same filter settings to both variants, so any difference you see comes from the profiles alone. This is variant 1, based on the noise profile with a noise level of 3.8, and this is the second one. It has the noise level of 2.6 in the area selected for profiling. The image shows some remaining noise elements when using the profile with the noise level of 2.6, and it becomes clean when using the 3.8 profile. A good noise profile really makes the difference. So, hopefully by now, it's clear just how important it is to build and check your profiles carefully. That's it, guys. We hope you found this tutorial helpful. Hit the subscribe button and give us a thumbs up if you liked it. Got questions? Drop them in the comments. We're happy to help.